All right guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're gonna build up the outriggers for the Tamiya Wrecker, the wheels and tires and fit the electronics tray. We're up to bag G, which doesn't have all that much in it. There's a couple of brackets, lots of screws and a bag of bushings that we're gonna be replacing with some proper bearings. As usual, the sub bags will get poured out into some pudding pots for easy access and the brackets put off to one side. Right. We're at step 52, which has a fair bit going on, although the two assemblies are just a mirror image of each other. So we'll just concentrate on one of them as usual. There's quite a few plastic bits here. We need four Z3s, the small slider widgets, Z5 and 6, the cases, Z10 and 11, the legs, four Z8s, the feet, Z1 and 3, the covers, then for screws, there's four M2 by five cap heads, 10 two by eight self tappers, eight M3 washers, eight M2 nuts, four two millimeter eclips, four link pins and two handles. Now I seem to be missing a clip here, which is a good start, but the very first thing you do is thread a nut on each of the handles. Just thread them on all the way. Next, the handles offer up to the cases and we thread on another set of nuts from the inside. You'll need to apply some thread lock to the ends of the thread so they stay put. Don't forget to loosen and re-tighten the nuts to spread it around. To save the plastic nut driver, I've swapped to a metal one which won't mind getting thread lock on it. Next, we'll attach the feet. Now it's not the most obvious from the diagram which way round they go, but if you look closely, one side is serrated and one side is smooth. They need to be the right way or the spacing won't be correct. To keep them in, we use the pins and eclips. Both the pins go in from the outside, which does make the inner eclip a little bit awkward. So be careful you don't ping it across the bench. When they're on, they should swing around very freely, so when in use, they'll level out on the ground. The assembly then drops into the case, so we can attach the small slider widgets. I found the easiest way to do it is to get everything lined up and drop the little widget in the back. Then use some tweezers to line it up with the holes in the case. Now keep them in place with a finger, flip it over and gently screw in the M2x5s. We don't want to do them up fully tight though. The idea is to set the tension so there's a little bit of friction so the legs don't drop freely, but you can still pull them down. Tweak the screws until they're just so. The last step is to offer up the back plate and screw in the five 2x8 self tappers. And that's one of the assemblies complete. The other one is exactly the same, except it's a mirror image. And well, they're a fairly nice bit of kit, but it would be awesome if they were motorised. Some sort of lead screw setup or a worm drive to a rack and pinion so it can't back drive. Right, step 53, shackles, mounts and brackets. We need a Z9 and 12, the mounts, the two metal brackets, four M2 by sixes, eight M2 by fours, four three by eight self tappers, four link holders, the little metal straps for the shackles, and of course we need four W17s, the shackles themselves. All right, shackles first then. Now we've already done a few of these, so we should know what to do. It's just a case of sitting them in a slot, laying the strap on the top, and screwing in the two M2 by fours. Just watch out for over tightening them, as it would be really easy to strip out the plastic. Repeat with the other one, and that's the shackles done. Next we have the plastic mounts to attach, but I think it's going to be marginally easier to attach the brackets before fitting the mounts to the legs. The brackets use two of the M2x6s, and just like the shackles, watch out for over tightening. The plastic mount has slots rather than holes to mount to the legs, so we can screw in the 3mm screws a couple of turns first, then offer up the mount and nip them up. A nice touch that means there's a little less to try and keep hold of while getting them started. Nip them up and that's one side done. Repeat with the other side and that's the legs ready to fit to the chassis. Step 54, fitting the legs. Now this is a simple one, we just need four 3x10 self tappers. But before we can attach the legs we need to remove the 3x8s currently holding in the rear cross member. Then it's just a case of offering up the leg, screwing in the 3x10s going through the leg mount into the cross member. 
It makes it quite a bit easier if you lift up the rear of the chassis. Sticking something under the axles works a treat. Fit both legs, give them a test, and that's step 54 complete. Step 55, wheels and tyres. Now we're going to need four AB2s, the front wheels, four V2s, the inner rear wheels, and four V1s, the outers. There's also the AB1s that stick to the front wheels, but we're going to skip them for now and work out what to do with them a little bit later. For tyres, we have four wide fronts and eight narrow rears. Then we have the screws where we need 12 M2 by 5 cap heads and 12 M2 plain nuts. For the front ones, there's not much to them. We just need to stretch the tyres over the wheels. Now the instructions do say to glue them on too, but for indoor use I've never really found the need. Even cruising around a car park pulling a trailer, I've not had a tyre pop off a wheel. The rears are a little bit more involved. We need to offer up an inner and an outer and use the screws and nuts. But to make it easier, it's best to fit all of the tyres first. Otherwise, it can be a bit tricky to get the inner beads to sit nicely in their slots. So with the tyres fitted, we can offer up a pair of wheels. The outers have three small pins that fit into holes in the inners, which align them so we can get the screws in. On the inside, there's hex shaped holes for the nuts. So it's just a case of popping in a nut, then fitting a screw. Do all three and we can add a little bit of thread lock, but we do need to be super careful not to get it on the plastic. So we use a cocktail stick to get a smear on the threads, then loosen and re-tighten the screws. It's a bit fiddly, but it's much better than losing the small screws and nuts and seeing a wheel roll off by itself. Rinse and repeat until you have a full set ready to go. Step 56, fitting the wheels. For parts we need 8 M4 nylock wheel nuts, 8 1150 bearings, 4 spline to hex adapters, the chassis and the wheels. At the front we press a bearing into each side of the front wheel, pop it over the axle and thread on a nut. Now the manual says to use some grease too, but that's really only if you're using the kit bushings. Using a proper ball race bearing, they're better off kept dry. The grease will just pick up dust and make a bit of a mess. At the rear we use the hex adapters. They slide over the axle shaft before sliding on a wheel, followed by a nut. Keep going until you've got all eight on, and that's the chassis rolling. Another good milestone in the build. Okay, step 57, the lower front plate. We need the plate G6. T16 and 17, the inner arches, six 3x8 self tappers, and the last metal bracket. First, we need to fit the bracket to the front of the plate on the underside. Now, we use the non threaded holes which line up with holes in the front edge. Then, we screw in two of the screws. Now, there's a surround on the plastic that aligns it nicely, which is important as it lines up the front of the cab. For the inner arches, which have slots again, so we can thread two more of the screws in a couple of turns, then offer up the arch and nip them up. Nice and simple, and I like with this plate they've made lots of holes for routing wires, so we should be able to make a nice tidy install. Step 58, fitting the plate. We need a T22, the base of the air intake, G4, the rear cab mount, two G2s, which are large plastic washers. For the first half of the step, we also need four 3x8 self-tappers and a 2x8 self-tapper. T22 fits to the back left corner and uses the 2mm screw. Nice and easy. Next, we have the rear cab mount that gets fitted over two plastic posts with two of the 3mm screws. Interestingly, it looks like it's exactly the same part that Tamiya used at the front of the Pajero on the CC01 chassis. But you know, if it works, why change it? At the front of the plate, we need to attach the two washers to the two posts, again with 3mm screws. These act as a place to wrap excess wiring for the front lights. The Tamiya MFCs tend to have a fairly long wire, so they almost always have miles of excess. It's nice that they've given us a place to stow it all. For the second part, fitting to the chassis, we need six M3x6s. Now this is almost always a little bit awkward. Getting all the holes to line up isn't the easiest, keeping in mind that we need to route the motor and servo wires at the same time, also being very careful not to pinch anything. 
once you've got two of the screws in the rest aren't too bad just be careful step 59 the upper plate we need the plate g1 and we might as well fit the seat bases which is two l6s for screws we need six three by eight self tappers first we fit the seat bases they just fit on the top and line up with some ridges that keep them nice and straight then we screw in a screw from the bottom we are going to end up removing these in the future so we can paint them but that's quite a long way off yet for now it's going to help us with positioning the wiring and other gubbins so we can see all the clearances the upper plate now gets sat on the lower plate and we use the last four screws to attach it just like the lower plate we need to think about wire routing and watch out for trapping and pinching step 60 electronics right this is where things are going to start to get a bit funky in this build now we've got an mfc03 to fit but really that's going to need its own video or three to really get into detail so for now we'll attach it to the truck but we're not going to hook it up just yet to fit we need the g5 mounting plate and two three by eight self tappers now in this build we're only going to fit the mfc there's also the vibration unit but i'm not a huge fan of that they really make the truck shake quite violently which isn't that realistic plus we can use the space for other things later in the build to attach the plate it just sits on the top plate and we use the two screws it's really just a large angle bracket next the mfc gets stuck to the back of the plate in the upright position the kit comes with some foam tape of course but as usual i'm going to use the fast track servo tape as it peels off cleanly if and when we need to rejig things before sticking things together we need to use some alcohol to degrease the surfaces then we cut a couple of squares of tape stick them to the plate peel off the backing line up the mfc so it's right in the middle and press it into place then we run the battery lead to the battery tray and the motor leads to the motor which takes us up to step 61 installing the battery but we've got a few more bits to do before we get to that so for this week that's going to be it next time we'll either work on the mfc install and have a bit of a play with it or maybe we'll have a change of direction and put together some of the comical grasshopper that we unboxed a few weeks ago also while i'm thinking about it there's something a bit weird going on with the comments over the last couple of weeks I've had notifications on my phone of a new comment, but when going to view it, the app says the comment isn't available. Also, looking for them, there's no trace. They're not held for review, they're just gone. Most strange, so if anyone has any ideas, do let me know. It's annoying as some of them have been questions, but I only get to see the first few words. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!